What the heck? Uh, yeah, thanks for that. You could have, like, dropped me off close to home. One star. <laughs> Where am I? Oh, God. Hey, guys. I'm back. But we've got all the new product releases still in front of us. Starting with today's little number. Some say if this product was stranded on a desert island, it would just charm its way back to shore. Others say at the moment of impact with this product, you get a scent of coconut. But all that we know is that today we're testing the new Wilson Dynapower forged irons. Yes. Look at that. Isn't she wonderful? All sparkly and shiny. Must be all that sand, you know? Bit of a bit of sand polish. So if I just whack out my book of most underrated brands of 2024. Ah, there it is. Wilson Golf. And yet still why? Extremely reasonably priced, competitive in performance, beautiful, major winner. Knows how to get off of a desert island. What more do you want? But, but as the saying goes, nice guys always finish last, which is exactly why I don't want to do a marathon because I'll never finish it. So we've got all the 2024 Wilson Arsenal to go through on this channel. And I've decided, which might be a surprise to a lot of you, I've decided to start with the Dyna Power Forged because it intrigues me. As we know, Wilson have done something incredible with a Dyna Power driver. Somehow it's come out of the blue competing with the big boys. Well, if you've tested it, you know it's serious stuff. But this area of Wilson Golf, I especially don't have much experience in. The, let's say, P790 sort of category. The player's distance iron. And first impressions, I've got to say, this looks more like a CB than something that's going to hold a lot of technology inside, which straight away out of the gates is very impressive. Of course, with a better player's iron, we want the tech, we want that performance, but we also don't want it to look big and bulky. And I don't get that impression with this iron at all. All in all, it's a very attractive looking iron. I'm not overly sure about these big black slots on the sole. Obviously, we've got tech behind that again, protecting and preserving ball speed. But I've got to say, it is a wee bit of an eyesore. Now, I'm excited because we've got the full set of these irons. These are a real competitor to go in the bag for me. Very much on the sensible side, a bit more forgiveness this year because I want to play my best golf. So I will be taking these out on the course for a bit of a test and you will be seeing them definitely throughout the year. But I've actually got something else to say. I feel that Wilson are one of the best for head shape. I, this just looks absolutely beautiful behind the ball. Again, it's just all the, all the shapes in all the right places. It, I feel very confident with it, but it's not overbearing in terms of size. So we've got the seven iron. Let's give it a whack. That was a stiff swing at the bottom. Feels great. It's quite firm, but it sounds very like punchy. It's a like lovely little like, I don't know what the word is. We'll hit more, we'll hit more. It's like a little, it's not a click. It's like a little whistle, it's, it's lovely. I really like that, I really like that. Consistency with numbers and flights straight away and that's two different strikes on the face. I've got to admit though, I still stand by the fact that even if this performed better than anything, people would choose another brand, which is sad. It's cheaper, it performs as well, if not better, but yet you're gonna go for something that's cooler, maybe? So where does this sit on the iron scale this year for Wilson Golf? Well, on one side, we've got the big, very powerful launch pad irons. We have reviewed these, but I'm definitely excited to get them out again. And then over to the east, the cell gets slightly smaller in the form of the Dyna Power Game Improvement Iron. Then we go even smaller to the iron in question today, the Dyna Power Forged. And of course, oh baby, Staff Model MBCB, beautiful. Tell you what, 
I have not yet made contact with the ball. <laughs> but as far as dispersion goes, get in my bag, Babby. Is all I'm going to say. A little bit more, a bit left. Still no. What have you done? Wilson, is this legal? So I did mention a lot of technology in this iron and I wasn't telling porkies. Like everything in our world in 2024, AI is also taking over Wilson Golf. Don't worry for now, it's a good thing. F for now. Because Wilson say, thanks to the AI technology system, that they've been able to make a variable phase thickness across the entire face to, of course, improve ball speeds on off-center hits. Wilson are actually saying this is one of their most forgiving irons that they've ever made, which is amazing for its size. That was pants. I'm not even exaggerating when I say I've not reached the middle of the face yet. Everything's been bottom groove, left and right on the face, and yet, consistent speed, 180-ish carry, 5,495 with a right to left ball flight. I, I mean, there we go. Bit more height straight away, bit more curvature because we haven't got that heel protection anymore. 189 carry, spin rate up at 6,000. That is an absolute peach of a golf club. You know those little black marks that I mentioned on the sole that I said I didn't really like earlier? Well, that's the new piece of technology called player hole design. You'll only see this in the 47 iron where ball speed really matters to, again, protect ball speeds on strikes low in the face. Wilson's priority in construction was a lower center of gravity and high MOI. This has been achieved by pushing weight towards the toe, which gives us better ball speed, better launch, and better stability. And how much are they? A thousand US dollars. Good as anything. As good as anything. I love these clubs. So much feedback on strike. That was definitely the best we've had. Higher in the face, felt softer. The lower feels heavier feels firmer, and I know straight away that I've just not hit it, which again is a feedback a player, someone that can actually play golf, wants to feel. There's no way that's gone that straight. I've just mace windowed the follow through, and yet that's left, left side of the green. Now specs, and this is always a, you don't know what you're gonna get. It's a bit of a lottery in terms of loft because when you go into anything with the word distance, obviously that is a priority. Player's distance. So we want compact, but we want it to go a long way. So where on the scale do you think these sit between strong lofts and weak lofts? Honestly, we have very reasonable lofts. The seven iron sits at 30.5 degrees, which is still stronger than, let's say a traditional iron, but it's not the craziest we've ever seen. And I like that because they could have cranked a couple more degrees, but obviously a priority for them is still launch optimization. We want to get a decent flight, decent spin, and decent numbers. Oh. I'm right, gonna have to stop at some point. Right, to the five iron. And again, it's just, it's, it's absolutely stunning. <laughs> Ooh. And that is not hanging around either. 220 carry. These are very easy swings. This makes me think that we've got it's 240 to 5 iron, you know, that kind of thing. Well that it, it rolled to 230. It's the most it's it's one of the most complete irons that I've ever hit, I think. It offers everything. I don't think I needed to say anything in this video. I think I could have just gone, hit the shot and gone. You know? So before we look at the numbers, let's cover all the bases on every end of the scale of the bag. We've done seven iron that we started with, we've gone to the five, so let's have a look at the pitching wedge, which is 
So again, usually the neglected side of the set in a player's distance iron still, but it's a beautiful shape again. F feels quite like, like a low bounce. It feels quite sharp on the ground, if that makes any sense. And it's a lovely shape. And a very, very soft feel. I've seen everything. I don't need it anymore. You've got to consider this. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm not usually that biased towards golf clubs, but I feel like I need to defend this iron. Um, the only, I'd say, maybe a reason if, if you're very much dependent on feel, I f it can feel a little bit firm, I suppose. But again, the difference between the goods and the bads outweighs that for me because the center still feels very powerful and punchy. Still relatively soft, but when you get lower in the face, it does tend to get a little bit firmer. Now, quick look at the pitching wedge. Um, the concern here is spin. We've got one up at 9,000 RPM. Um, distance, this is, this is not a crazy distance for me. I didn't hit it particularly well, but we're looking at 140. We're not going anything crazy over like the 150s and 160s, which is good to see. We've got that control still. I have not removed a single shot. Um, we've got a few that I would probably argue are a bit too much right to left, but on average, that is quite stunning, really. <laughs> Nine shots, all in and around it, all in and around the face as well. I think I hit two pretty reasonably well, um, but consistency on speed and numbers is quite amazing. You can see my last shot was 132. Um, straight away, you can tell with the speed when we got it out of the center, but we've not lost a lot on the miss hits. So very promising there. And then we get to the five, five iron. Look at that. That last one that I basically missed. The big difference obviously is traje trajectory. The big difference is trajectory um, between the ones that I've struck, to struck a little bit better compared to the, are we all right? The ones I struck a little bit better compared to this one that I didn't. Obviously, it's a lot lower in peak height, but the, the, well, the, the good thing is we've not lost that much speed and it's still gone the total distance, so ball speed protection, I would say. Guys, thank you as always for watching, and I'll see you next time.